Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to help you in onboarding Linux servers to Azure Arc. Now, if you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about onboarding process of Windows servers to Azure Arc from Group Policy Object. Whereas in this video, I'm going to talk about what are the Linux platforms which are supported. What are the software requirements that should exist on a Linux machine so that you can get it onboarded to Azure Arc? Then I will tell you the entire onboarding process of Linux servers end to end. And lastly, we'll see how to check logs on the machine itself. Okay. Now, when it comes to supported Linux OS, this is a complete list that is available. And for this demo, I'm going to use Ubuntu as a platform. Now, likewise, for Windows, we had certain requirements related to PowerShell and .NET Framework. Similarly, for software requirements, these four components must exist on your Linux machine. Then only the onboarding process will work. So, for example, wget command is used to go to a specific link and download uh, the respective script. And that script is responsible for initiating the installation. Now, for all obvious reasons, I always recommend to review the official article when it comes to knowing about the networking configuration. So if you want to know what are the URLs which are required, practically speaking, it's almost same, uh, be it Windows or Linux. But still, I will add this link in uh, the description section. Please go ahead and review it. If you have any questions or if you want to figure out what is the purpose of a specific URL altogether. Lastly, TLS 1.2 will be used for all the communication that happens between the client and the Azure Arc service or any endpoint which is listed over here. Now let's talk about the difference in the script that you will see when you, you will create it for Linux as a platform. Practically speaking, there is no difference apart from the URL getting changed. Okay. So if I'll show you this particular section, which says wget, if you remember the same software component, which is required on a Linux as a platform, this will go to this particular link, which is aka.ms forward slash a Z C M a agent. Okay. So let's say if I go to this particular link, which is aka dot ms forward slash azcma agent i will be routed to a specific link wherein again there is a script right and this is the actual script which will get downloaded and which is actually going to perform all the evaluation in terms of checking which version of linux os you have where exactly this script has to go to download the respective packages so for example let's say if i here type package.microsoft.com you can see i'm getting a lot of references so for example this script will configure the host machine to download packages practically speaking from packages.microsoft.com and this is the package which will be installed if i'll click on next this is where it is going for amazon uh, linux i mean for all the versions to be very precise it will be going to this particular link itself now there are multiple different uh, components, again, which can be enabled through Azure Arc and uh, Defender being one of them. So you can see some of uh, the redirect, which is happening for Microsoft.asc as well. You'll come to know about this when we'll talk about Microsoft Defender for Cloud in a lot more detail. Okay, so this is just for your information. This is the actual script that will get initiated on the machine. Okay. And wget command will be used to get routed to this particular link. Now, if you will see here, there is a specific link, which is for log URL. OK, I'll talk about this in a lot more detail uh, when we will be discussing about the architecture and deep analysis. But just for your information, this URL has many components or let's say many other links as well linked and every link has its own purpose. OK. Now, the next section that we see over here is again related to the activation, which is practically same, right? If you see this particular section, which says AZCMA agent connect, 
This is the same command which is used for Windows as a platform as well. And this section you can see over here is the section where exactly this script is getting initiated with these many commands or let's say these many uh, parameters. Okay. Now to make it simple and to get all the detail on the terminal or let's say on the console itself, what I have done, I have added one more switch, which is hyphen verbose. That's it. So now I'm going to switch to my machine. Uh, it's a Linux machine, Ubuntu machine, where I will be downloading this particular script. I will be initiating that script and I'll show you how the machine is getting onboarded to Azure Arc. So this is my Linux machine and it is having Ubuntu 20.04 and the host name is Arc Linux hyphen virtual machine. Now on this machine itself, I'm going to sign into portal.azure.com and I'm going to click on Azure Arc and now I'm going to click on add. Now again, in this particular section of add multiple servers, I have clicked on generate script and then I'm now going to click on next. Now this process remains same, right? So I'm just going to select my resource group and in the region, I'm going to select my respective location, which is central India. And then in the operating system section, I'm going to select Linux, no change in connectivity method. And in service principle, I'm going to select arc onboard and then I'm going to click on next. Now in the tag section, again, I'm going to uh, leave it blank because, uh, this is just the first demo for Linux itself. So now I'm going to just download this particular script and then I will edit this particular script and I will make sure all the values are populated. Okay. So if I'll talk about this particular script, what you see here is I'm not getting that switch of hyphen hyphen verbose. So I'm adding that so that the respective logs can be displayed on the console itself. And then this particular section of service principle secret is not uh, having valid values. Okay. Or let's say service principle secret was not populated to be very precise. So based on the last video, you know, a couple of you had uh, issues in creating new secrets. So I'll just show you the method very quickly. I'll go to portal.azure.com inside Azure AD. Now I am in app registration and here I'm going to search for my service principle, which is arc onboard, the one that I've shown you while creating the script. Now I'll go to secrets and certificates or certificates and secrets, whatever you want to name it. And then I'm going to click on this option of new client secret. I'll choose a respective time frame for which my client secret should be valid. And that's it. I'll click on add. Now I'm going to copy this particular value and make sure you keep it handy because once you refresh the portal, you will not be able to see that value again. Okay. So I've copied uh, the client secret and I've saved my script now. Now I'm going to move this to my desktop. And as you can see, uh, this particular script is now getting listed over here. Now I'll go ahead and launch uh, this particular script. Okay. Now, Typically speaking, this is something which is going to take some time, at least two or three minutes because all the respective packages and everything is getting downloaded on your machine. And once it is completed, then you can just read this section itself and it will give you a lot more insights. Okay. So if I talk about the first two links itself, you can see this is the same one, which I was showing you, or let's say where we were getting redirected once we were trying to navigate aka.ms forward slash a Z C M A agent. Okay. So this is that particular section, which I was showing you in the deck. So once the machine tries to resolve this particular URL, it gets redirected to the one which is mentioned on the console. I'll just show you this quickly as well. And that's the reason why aka.ms is also listed as a required URL. When you'll go ahead and check the networking but, or let's say network requirement for Azure Arc. Okay. If you'll scroll down, you can see it is going to multiple different URLs to get the respective, uh, let's say packages or files, which are required for this agent to work. And if you look now at the center, it is actually evaluating that what is the version of this particular server, right? And uh, what is the type of uh, 
let's say agent or instance it has to install so as you can see it is going to prod and this is that particular section from where it was able to find the agent which is a set cma agent okay now it is showing you the size and everything is getting downloaded it is creating references for json configuration which is holding the values for azure arc agent and then you can see it is creating a link as well uh, for the services which are required to be very precise now these things are you know actually documented in a much better way but i am specifically focusing on these things in my next video for now i'm just showing you the references of what exactly is happening under the hood okay now if you will see this particular section this is the only one which you will be able to find in the logs command which is again something which i will be showing in a lot more detail but just for your information these are the locations where the logs are saved so that you can go ahead and do a deep analysis whatever is required okay so now once the agent is required sorry once the agent is installed you can see it checked the host name and now these are all endpoints which the machine is trying to reach and once all the endpoints that are required to connect to azure are available the installation goes through in the next section we might also see whether it is using proxy or not or and you can see uh, you know uh, it is showing proxy is not used as well as it is checking that whether there is any resource with this name which currently exists in the subscription or not okay so these are all different process which happens under the hood and once everything is completed you can just navigate to the portal and search for the machine and as you can see this is that particular machine it is successfully onboarded and everything is in place okay so now i'm just going to clear the screen and then i'm just going to run the same command now the best part is this command is same for windows or linux you can use azcma agent commands and all the commands to be very precise with this particular module on windows as well as linux so if i'll run the same command which i have used in my previous window or let's say previous video to be very precise you see i'm um, okay so it is not initiated with admin access so i'll just go ahead and run this with admin and you can see all the urls are reachable everything is in place and that's the only reason why my server got onboarded to azure arc without having any issues so now let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed we have discussed about the onboarding process of linux what are the software requirements how you can go ahead and check logs in the next video i'm going to take the entire analysis on a different level altogether where i will be explaining each and every component of azure arc the entire architecture and how you can do deep analysis in terms of knowing whether and how this service is implemented in your environment and giving you the best results or not so if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time